Alrighty. So, as I was sitting in my thinking chair thinking about things I was thinking about, it was interesting that this came up. Yesterday I was talking about your projects. Well, uh, the the last three days was really just getting into going from task oriented to project mind minded. From this will happen sometime to a project manager managing his projects or her projects. Uh, doing these things for God and actually a project manager for God. And it's and it's interesting once you take that approach, how things kind of shift. Okay. We say, uh, I want to lose weight. That's my task. That's what I want to do. All right. But when it's a project, you really put things in order and you lay out how you're going to do it. It's not just something that you're going to do. Eventually, you lay out how you're going to do it. So uh, what I wanted to do today is really talking about talk about um, turning that passion uh, that you have to fuel your purpose. Um, remember your icky guys, your reason for being and you're not looking for purpose. You're not searching for your purpose. You're living out your purpose. You're living out the way the way that you live encompasses your purpose. So it, it kind of encapsulates it. Let's see. Uh, say if this was your purpose, this right here, you and your purpose, the way you live your life kind of guides it along it's in there you don't have it here and you have to go searching for it you have to go feeling around in the dark God says okay this is you this is your purpose work with it okay so a lot of people really spend their lives looking for their purpose when it's already in them it just has to be lived out so really they're looking for something that sometimes uh, you end up trying to be somebody that you're not because what's in you is being neglected and you're busy trying to be who the world says you need to be or you know what you would be good at this and you take that so uh, today I wanted to focus on linking your passions and to your first project because we want to get these projects done and not so much that uh, I got projects to do it's really that you picking these projects that will impact your life uh, and impact the world your circle of influence so <clears throat> you know gather together what you need my first project, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. My project, I know I've had, I had 10 goals, right? But since uh, the whole Wabiki guy came to me as, uh, as a thought, it started to go, you know, this is a thought, nice thought. Uh, then I started learning about Ikigai and Wabi Sabi and Ichiko Ichie and Kintsugi and those things of that nature, uh, Ikibana. All these things that are just welling up on the inside, that doesn't do anybody any good if I just keep it to myself. So my first project was uh, to really start a Moai. And a couple of episodes back... Um, I was going to look for it was I think March 4th or March 9th definitely last Thursday last Thursday 
that talked about uh, Moai and being connected for life and what Moai was. It's a, it's a support, uh, social support group in order to provide bearing support for social, financial, health, or spiritual interests. Uh, Moai means meeting for a common purpose. Now, it's close to Ichigo Ichia, Ichie, right? That's meeting for, I mean, that's once in a lifetime. Or one moment, one meeting. Uh, turning our passions into our our icky guy. You you'll know you'll notice that when you are putting your project together, that your icky guy starts to come out. If you're looking for it, it'll start to come out. And the things, the ideas that you have, really, will start to uh, bleed your icky guy your reason for being because this is you it's, it's all about <clears throat> the things that you and God are doing so I had some things I wanted to, to cover uh, start together what you need of course do research you probably aren't uh, the, the first to come up with the idea I'm not the first to come up with starting a uh, Moai as a matter of fact I mean Moai has been around for centuries because uh, a lot of people that are in Moais are over 100 years old. <laughs> so the idea is not new. <clears throat> the concept might be uh, a little bit newer uh, because it's not common in the States. Or we would call it something else. But, you know, since it's something that I'm passionate about, and God is really putting these things together. Uh, let me tell you how it works. Like, uh, I'm thinking of having a tea, right? And I was like, man, it'd be nice to be able to have a tea set up uh, wherever I go. It's portable. And um, there's $500 tables that has nice teacups and everything. And it has a burner on it where you put the um, kettle on. And um, I got an induction um, little stovetop little thing. It's about, about this big. And I'd be, I was like, man, you know, it'd be nice if I could just put that wherever I wanted to. And I was walking along and this tea kettle jumped out at me. The, the design of it was like, it was very plain. It was just metallic, like steel. But the design of it just was like, hey, you need to check this one out. So I walked over to it and I looked at it and I'm like, oh man, it's it's uh, ceramic. I mean, it'll, it'll go on a ceramic um, oven, stove top. It's induction, it's electrical, it'll work on gas. It's built for everything that I was going to, you know, that I could possibly think of using it. And it was in a very odd place. And me, I take that as a hey, God was like, look, look right there. Look, it's right there. Get it. So I got it. And if I wanted to, I could have, I could boil water wherever I am, really. Um, from as long as there's an electrical outlet, I can boil water. So if you were having tea in my house, you could do. I could do it in the room. I could do it in the uh, living room. I could do it upstairs. I can do it downstairs. Anywhere, outside. Good morning. So the things that you do. God will start to put together for you. He's like, okay, this is, this is going to go like this. This is going to go like this. Go, this go like this. Uh, so I want to start a Moai, right? <clears throat> First thing I looked up, uh, okay, this is what a Moai is all about. And this is how people do it. Then at the bottom of the website that I was looking at, it said Moai Starter Kit. I mean, how to start your Moai. 
I don't, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to really try to make it up and uh, reinvent it. And like I said, God just, so that was the first place I went. Interesting. So let's go through these steps. Start to gather what you need. Uh, since you're not the first one to come up with the idea, probably, uh, even if you are, it's going to have your fingerprint, you and God's fingerprint all over it. No matter what it is, if it's your idea, if it's uh, it's if it's something that you're redoing for your purposes, and don't be shy to ask for help. Uh, <clears throat> before you ask for help, though, this is one of my things. I'm pretty skilled at a lot of things. Uh, kind of like a jack of all trades, but master of none. Before you ask for help. Remember that you're asking for help. Okay? Now, before you ask for help, not only are you asking for someone to help you, but, and not, hey, when, for some reason around here, when you ask for help, that means, hey, do this for me. But it's your idea. So before you ask for help, know that you're asking for help <clears throat> and don't expect the person just to do it for you, but, uh, be clear on actually what you actually want done. If you're clear, the person can be clear on what you want and won't be trying to figure it out. So if you're asking for help, if I ask you to, if I ask you to help me, with this more, I need to have a clear understanding of what I want and what I want you, how I want you to be a part of it. Or we'll both be sitting around looking at each other, wondering when is this thing going to happen? So it's hard to motivate someone if you don't know what it looks like. But if you have an idea It'll go a lot faster. It'll go a lot smoother. You'll know what you want. Mm, that's not what I wanted. Or uh, you can tell that person, just do this, do this, do this, and then put it together. Uh, also, have intentional implement implement implementations. Okay? Uh, things don't have to be, if I say I'm a starter more, I... Just wait, I'm going to start it. A year later, the whole thing comes out and nobody knew what was happening. It just came out of nowhere. It probably won't be as successful as I, it could be. Uh, I'm rolling out things in steps and pieces. This is how I'm getting along. I've started the project. I, I've got this done. I got this done. Step three is um, I'm working on. I got these power principles ready to go you know, in these little steps, let people see what God and, uh, what God is doing, how he's growing you and your project. And they'll most more than likely want to be a part of the vision. So, uh, and another thing is to have fun on these steps, you know, enjoy life. If you're stressing about the things that you are supposed to be doing or feel that you should, this should be happening right now, if you're stressing about it, then more than likely your focus is overstepping uh, the bounds, the boundaries. Uh, you are, if you're stressing about something, there's a conflict going on. Something is not going the way you want it to. Now, usually, if you're stressing about it, it's more than likely that you have no control over it. If you want this thing done, but you don't have any control over it. Because if you did have control, you could change it and then you wouldn't stress about it, right? So, I want you to keep that in mind. That things can go a lot smoother if you focus on what you focus on. 
do what you're supposed to be doing and let God handle the things that's beyond your control. I, the, the scripture says, uh, I got it down at the bottom. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. OK, we got that now in their hearts. Humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. When we put these things in God's hands, it's going to be successful because you plus God is a majority. Um, as you go throughout this day, I want you to just, just keep that in mind. Just keep that in the back of your head. Uh, if I'm stressing about this, this there, there, there's something wrong. I'm, I need to give something to God because uh, something is beyond my control. Because if I could control it, I wouldn't be stressed about it. I might be disappointed in the results or disappointed in myself the way I'm handling it. But you shouldn't be stressing. Okay? If you are stressing, just take a minute to breathe. Grab yourself a cup of tea. And, okay, God, what am I doing that's out of out of place? Because stress is kind of like a signal saying, hey, um, you're doing something wrong. Now, if you are worried about something, you're out of place because that's in the future and it hasn't happened yet. <clears throat> so there's a possibility whatever you're worried about is not even going to take place. That means you're spinning your wheels in the future. Come back to now. If you are sad and disappointed about something that you have missed an opportunity or, or something like that, uh, put it in God's hands and ask for a path to get back to the now because if you're sad or you're disappointed in something you're focused on the past and you need to get back to right here right now it's gone that hasn't happened yet what we have is right now and since we have help with our friends and with God himself, we can do all things. All right. So let's take that and have a successful day. So, oh boy, I get up like this all the way over here and come pie.